give a brief um, introduction to Readist Review first this morning. Uh, my name is Ruth Garside. I'm a senior lecturer in evidence synthesis at the European Centre for Environment and Human Health, which is part of the University of Exeter Medical School. Um, and my role is to do systematic reviews and evidence syntheses across a, role of, a range of different topics. Um, and I'm particularly interested in complex questions that require the use of a range of different types of evidence and particularly I'm interested in qualitative evidence synthesis. I'm a co-convener for the Cochrane Qualitative and Implementation Methods Group um, and have been working on um, different methods of qualitative synthesis for about 10 years now. So um, I think my presentations are going to be um, perhaps slightly different to the ones you've had this morning. So I'm going to give a kind of overview of the method um, first and some of the assumptions behind it, the sorts of questions that it answers, and then uh, give some examples. In this case, I'm, I'm giving one example, but we can talk about other possibilities um, at the end if that's helpful. So... I can make the thing move on. There we go. So what is um, a realist review? The basic questions first. So this is a type of systematic review which is often referred to as theory driven. Um, and its goal is more about explaining and understanding what's going on rather than judging and summarizing uh, the evidence which is out there. So it takes a slightly different perspective to either reviews of quantitative or qualitative purely um, evidence. It's sometimes referred to as a logic of inquiry, a, a, a mechanism for looking at things rather than a methodology. And it can incorporate both qualitative and quantitative evidence into it. Some of you may have already seen this um, helpful diagram from the epicenter from James Thomas and colleagues which tries to explain different types of synthesis approaches from the more aggregative over here on the right to the more configuring or interpretative and they think of these if you look at the row along the bottom in relation to theory so while a meta-analysis and content analysis is looking for the sum of what's going on and looks to test theory, so you're uh, looking to test hypotheses and see whether or not they're true. And although I think there's a lot of um, words and conversation about reducing bias and how objective these kinds of reviews are. Anyone who's done them will tell you that there is interpretation about what goes into the um, review, how you define the question and so on, but that these tend to happen before um, and after the synthesis, not in it. So they're ways of framing the question or using the results from the synthesis. And then Right over on the left hand side here are the more configuring or interpretative reviews um, and they've got metaethnography here as an example which I'm going to speak about yet next and in this case the interpretation happens during the synthesis to build meaning but um, and then you're generating theory so you're using empirical data to propose theory and then realist which is where I'm speaking today and I think you've already had a uh, presentation about framework synthesis, you're exploring um, theories. So it's just one way of thinking about the different approaches, their relationship to interpretation and their relationship to theory. So some people have said, well, um, you know, there's so many methods out there, there's loads of methods um, within quantitative systematic review, there's lots of methods in qualitative evidence synthesis, why do we need another method? And um, it's been proposed as a way of thinking about complexity in questions 
which are subject to systematic review. You can also have realist evaluation, so for complex interventions in primary research as well. Um, and it takes a different kind of perspective to traditional positivist research, and particularly in the recognition that interactions between mechanisms and context are really important. So it's not just does something work, it's how does it work in this context with this mechanism. And it wants to explore, create, and sometimes test mid-range theories of impact. And a mid-range theory is somewhere between the nuts and bolts um, daily stuff and the grand theories of everything. It has to be something which is explanatory and slightly abstracted, but it also needs to be quite close to the data. And according to Mark Pearson and colleagues, um, Realist approaches are grounded in the realist philosophy of science, which holds that it is possible to discern generative mechanisms, but they are thought about within the social systems in which they operate. So we're not looking at these very sort of pure positivist ideals about what works um, and thinking about social systems often as things which... Uh, bias the findings rather than thinking about them as potentially very important aspects which may be the reason or the way in which something becomes successful or not successful. So it does have a different sort of epistemological and ontological background. So um, having said uh, that realist evaluation and realist review is thinking about complex interventions, just some definitions around what complex means and these are taken from the MRC report about what complex interventions are in the context of um, health. So these are mostly sort of public health type um, interventions that have been considered in this way for the health background. So this is thinking about um, the fact that there may be interacting components both in the intervention and control groups that there might be a number of different behaviours that need to be changed or impacted on by an intervention. And those behaviours might be both those who are receiving an intervention, but also those who are delivering an intervention. It may also be that there's lots of different groups who are targeted. So, um, for example, in a big obesity programme, there might be lots of different types of activities that go on under that activity, which might include trying to influence schools' behaviour, um, the behaviour of councils or local planning people. It might be targeting children and adults, people who are obese and people who are not. Um, and those types of um, complexities in an intervention soon add add up to um, very different things. Um, it may also be that there's a lot of different outcomes which you're hoping to influence and that they, they may be very variable as well. And also that there may need to be a degree of flexibility or tailoring in the interventions to ensure that they work. So I'm sure all these um, aspects are very familiar for people who are thinking about conservation and environmental management where the um, interventions that you're looking at are almost invariably complex. And um, so realist approaches are potentially very useful. So they all really came about trying to what we call unpack the black box, where um, there may be very long and um, complex chains of influence. So where um, A, doing an intervention leads to not just C, D and E, but maybe X, Y and Z further down the line, that these are very complicated and that in the past we've been quite bad at articulating exactly what is going on in the black box where the miracle occurs. So we're hoping to unpack the black box. We're thinking about chains of causation which may not be linear, may be very long, may have feedback loops within them. Um, and importantly, we're thinking about interventions where um, people are what makes something successful or not successful, um, and those inevitably become uh, complex um, interventions, and also that these may be very highly context dependent. So one way of expressing this is to say that the causal relationship between two events can only be inferred where underlying mechanisms of action and the context in which that mechanism occurs is fully understood. And in realist terms, 
this is the way that that's often thought about, that it's the mechanism of action within a specific context that leads to a particular outcome. So the um, implications of that are that the same outcome might be achieved through a different mechanism of ac action in a different context, that they may not be the same in all circumstances, or that the mechanism... Um, which is used may have a different expression in different contexts to make it um, happen. And you sometimes hear these referred to as CMO configurations. The language in realist um, evaluation and review is quite specialist, and I think it, people find it quite um, off-putting. So the context mechanism outcome configurations are one way that people talk about um, realist reviews and realist evaluations. So the types of questions that um, realist review aims to understand, and again, this is a very common um, expression or set of words that you hear in relation to realist reviews, it's not what works like it is in an effective review, it's explicitly what is it about this program that works, for whom and in what circumstances. So it's focusing more on how um, and why things work or fail. Um, and trying to understand how those things come about. So this is a diagram which um, tries to capture that. So um, a program intervention may change the context or the mechanisms, which changes the interaction between mechanisms and outcomes and produces a set of outcomes. And the other thing that realist reviews try to do um, is to think about both intended and unintended consequences. So the, one of the problems with complex interventions is that they sometimes do things that you were hoping they wouldn't or hadn't even thought they might do. And um, thanks to Andrew Booth for um, this slide. In terms of what the processes are, um, this slide shows it's called a traditional Cochrane review, um, but, you know, a, a, any traditional quantitative systematic review has these steps and realist reviews also have a fairly structured um, set of activities that go along with them but they may be different to what you're used to in a, a standard systematic review and they tend to be a lot more iterative so that original slide that I showed you with the configuring versus aggregating systematic reviews, it said, you know, for a traditional review, the interpretation is done before the protocol's written and maybe done after the analysis has been done, but it doesn't happen through the synthesis. Whereas for a realist review, these are iterative processes so that the interpretation may be happening as you go along. Um, so that means that the Early stages are often about trying to define your terms, trying to understand what the correct question is for a particular topic and to articulate candidate theories. And theories are just explanations here. Um, again, the searching may be much more iterative and inclusion criteria might change through the process as you realise that things that you didn't know were going to matter do matter and things you thought might be important, maybe don't have the kind of information that you want. Um, and you don't necessarily um, appraise the quality of studies in traditional ways either, because it's a very pragmatic way of thinking about quality. So studies might be included in the review because they are providing a particularly relevant um, contribution to the theory development and um, so it may not be the traditional ways of, of quality assessing. Similarly, extracted data may not be the same from all papers, which again would not be normal in a, in a traditional systematic review. So the data is synthesized to achieve a refinement of program the theory and the program theory is to determine what works for whom in what circumstances. So again, it's a very precise um, definition about what you do and what your outcomes are, um, but may be different to other ways of doing it. Uh, the other things I think are probably more similar, dissemination and, and recommendations are the same throughout, but it does have a sort of different focus. So these are the key steps, clarifying the scope, searching for evidence, appraising and extracting data, synthesizing evidence and disseminating, but again, they 
may go back and forth. You may do um, some stages several times um, and refine them through the process. Uh, I won't go through this um, in detail, but I can share these slides. Again, this is just another way of thinking about what questions are being asked at different stages of the review. Um, and you'll see that it has a focus on defining what things are, what's the nature and content of the intervention, what is policy, what are policies trying to do, for example. And the searching is to tr is all about trying to develop program theory. So it's all about trying to think about explanations for how things work in particular situations. Um, and I've taken this from a um, paper by Rycroft Malone and all. So one of the other ways of thinking about what's going on is to realise that interventions and policies are theories. Um, and that's a core um, informing belief, if you like, of realist review, so that if we propose doing something, even if it's not very well articulated and there isn't a program theory or there isn't um, a logic model or an, there isn't even a, maybe a textual ex explanation about how we think, think something's going to happen, um, there are always implicit, if not explicit, theories behind interventions. We're assuming that if we do this, then something else will happen as a result of it. So I'm just going to very briefly present um, for the last few minutes um, on a uh, realist review that I've been working on here with colleagues in the UK, which is looking at um, social prescribing. And social prescribing is becoming increasingly popular um, in the UK. It doesn't have a particularly well-developed evidence base. And the idea is that within primary care for some uh, patients, it, the appropriate prescription is not necessarily a drug or a health technology, that it may actually be something social. So for people who have, for example, ongoing mental health problems or um, have stress, that what they might need is um, encouragement to join social groups who are doing artistic or physical activity activities or involved in charity work or whatever. And um, this has been taken up with great enthusiasm uh, because the NHS is um, running out of money and um, without very many um, ideas about how these might work. And one of the things we said was that actually it the first bit of that process is completely not understood. Nobody said what the... Um, the service uh, referral needs to look like. So it doesn't matter how, effect, how effective your knitting group or your physical activity group is if you don't actually get transferred from primary care into the thing. So we wanted to use realist approaches to try and explore and explain different methods of referral um, into social prescribing and say why they may or may not uh, work. So we were primarily trying to develop um, theories about how we might best support people into social prescribing. So um, we did a lot of searching, but in two main phases. So the first one was to identify different processes for social prescribing and to use these to develop program theories and by program theories, we developed a series of if-then statements as a way of expressing those. Um, and then once we developed the if-then statements, we asked our advisory group to prioritise the um, list of if-then statements. And we then did targeted searches to try and find um, evidence which would support or not support the if-then statements that we were developing. Um, so we had a broad set and then a very targeted set of searches. Overall, um, we extracted information from 109 um, papers, um, of which quite a small proportion were kept conceptually rich and developed a lot of our theory, while the others perhaps just offered a little bit of supporting information. Um, we then used these to develop program theory 
thoughts which were expressed through these if then statements and we identified that there were three key stages of referral how you get how you enroll people how you engage somebody in an activity and how you keep them going so we used our advisory group to prioritize within those three stages um, which statements we should try and develop further and as an example these are the sorts of if then statements which we've come up with which propose program theory for how these activities are most likely to work. So, for example, um, the first one, if the patient believes the social prescription will do them good, then they will be receptive to a referral. And we further develop that with the text in green to um, show what influences whether or not the patient does believe these things, some of which may be modifiable um, within the consultation or beyond. So these are our kind of program theories and we use that to develop a kind of overarching um, diagram which showed at what stage different aspects need to be in place in order to try and um, ensure that people were transferred from uh, primary care into the community. Um, and this is our, this is our main output um, from the Realist Review. So um, I'll wrap up, but just to say that um, Ramesses is a, um, a project which is trying to develop and support both realist and um, meta-narrative um, reviews. There's a project page. Uh, there's a really active JISC mail discussion list, which um, the address is there called Ramesses. Um, and they're incredibly supportive. You, if you are doing a realist review and you're struggling and you want to know, um, you know, what should I read about this? What should I do about the other? Um, it's a very responsive discussion list. They've also published the Ramesses group some reporting guidelines for um, realist reviews, which, again, are very helpful for uh, con conducting them as well as for reporting them. So I really recommend um, if you're doing a realist review or would like to, just like to know more to sort of get yourself on the JISC list, JISC mail discussion list. And that's um, that's all for me.